Hey everyone, and welcome, welcome to Grenades, Grenades and Horseshoes, where, where we strive to bring good times, good feels, and general shenanigans every Wednesday night at 9pm Eastern. Eastern. Hello! How is everyone? Hi. Hello. Episode 15 of Grenades and Horseshoes. Uh, an episode that makes history. It makes grenade history, it makes horseshoe history. Yep. Yep. Another step forward for for our, our little little podcast, our little product. That's right. Here. That's right. We have our very own Twitch channel now, twitch.tv forward slash grenades and horseshoes. Of course we uh, we play uh, we we stream on Mark Square too, so twitch.tv mm-hmm. forward slash Mark Square, but always hosted on the Grenades and Horseshoes channel for the for a while till we build that up. Uh, we'll be getting uh, some streams going on that. Uh, we're going to talk to our content creators and see if they're interested in streaming on that channel as well. Getting getting you guys some regular content from some fun loving Destiny players and uh, and actually having a, a big team like that. The great thing is they play a lot of other games too, so we'll learn yeah. about what they're into and uh, they you know they have the mind of a Destiny player. Oh, uh, I'm Mark Square and this is uh, Unilala and Greg goes to E. Good evening, everyone. <laughs> Let's forget that part. Dang it. <laughs> <laughs> The beatings commence. Uh, so yeah, how was the weekend? Uh, weekend gaming this week for you guys. Notice I said gaming, not weekend gaming. destiny. Yeah, what well, does this mean? Since nobody's nobody's jumping on this topic, I'm gonna I'm gonna call <laughs> a spade a spade, and I'm gonna go yeah. straight to the point and say, God, what is wrong with Destiny Two? I mean, <laughs> what is it about this game that I want to love <laughs> so much, and yet I have no interest in playing right now? Uh-huh. We, we've discussed it off air, and we haven't really brought it up because this is a, a show that is really, you know, our goal is to support the Destiny community, support the developers and the great people that put together this fantastic game. And yet each of us are struggling right now thinking about, where does Destiny 2 fit into our lives as a whole? How do we recapture that spark of, I want to come home most nights of the week and put in a couple hours into this game after a long day at work, after taking care of my dogs and yeah. you know people who have families yeah. and thinking about where does this game fit from an interest level that they're willing to sacrifice their discretionary time to, to play it. And right now, it isn't there for me. There isn't anything in Destiny 2 right now that gets me excited to come home from work, hop on, and and play this game. Um, so obviously, I've found other ways. I've expanded my interest area, but you know, I think that Bungie has a little bit of a problem on their hands in terms of appealing to players like me in particular. That there's mm-hmm. got to be something in this game that gets me coming back to it. And I'm trying to figure out what that was in Destiny 1. A little bit before we went live, uh, I was saying to Mark that, you know, Destiny 2 might be the worst thing to happen to my my feelings about Destiny, you know, just in general. And, I mean, I love the campaign. I love the mechanics, the gameplay, the graphics, mm-hmm. the audio. They've done a fantastic job with what it is. So what is it about Destiny 1 that when when we wrapped up Destiny 1, I was still excited to go in and run Crota, run King's Fall, run Wrath of the Machine, go in and hang out in Crucible, check out the weapons that I was getting. You know, there was just... There was an it factor, I think, towards the lifespan of the end of Destiny 1. And for me, it it started with the Taken King and and moving forward that I feel like Destiny 2 needs to figure that out if it's going to satisfy a gamer like me. Uh, I agree. Uh, But there is one thing. I've I've been thinking about this a little bit, right? So um, I, I feel the same. Uh, I haven't been playing. Uh, real life has been happening. I've been, you know, watching Stranger Things and, and you know, coloring in a coloring book and things like that. So, <laughs> like a uh, professional. Yeah, yeah. So I'm been... an adult color color. <laughs> That's happens. right. So, um, you know, I, but I did, I survived a content drought that you never had to, had to even encounter, Gray. And that was the one after the dark below. And they kept releasing three player content, right? And it just kept frustrating everyone. It was like we had Crota was a great raid. Uh, then then we got Prison of Elders. <clears throat> it was okay. And then um, you know the next thing we got was this the next 
release was this uh, this raid on in the Taken King, and it was so epic in scale and so large that you think to yourself, God, could you have just given us half of that six months ago mm-hmm. and spread out the content, right? So right. We, we are getting a content drop after three months, which is what The Dark Below was to Destiny 1, right? Mm-hmm. So in that, we did get a raid. Um, uh, I don't think we'll get a raid. I, to be honest with you, it's there's a phrase that that has been said over and over in our chat, and it is satisfying end game content, and it's like a mantra in the Destiny community right now, mm-hmm. and and the and that's the thing. Like, is is the is the the end game satisfying enough? Right now, the answer is no. It's it's not. Um, I I I know. The raid is funner now. Wait, wait, no. It's not funner now than when I first played it. It's less frustrating now than when I first played it. Um, it's not any more fun. Um, so you, but you're hanging everything on that raid, right? Everybody's hanging everything on that raid. So it's you know, I mean, it's something that uh, that 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 is a hole in the content, but it is. There's no. There's no. You know, until Curse of Osiris comes out, there's no expansion. There's no, you know, there's no thing right now that we're, you know, we don't know how the game is actually going to play out yet. We are, we are a little bit impatient. And it's funny, I think uh, I said, um, hey, welcome to the chat, everybody, by the way, Mystic Rose Lawn Boy. Uh, Gray does look like a pilot Lawn Boy. <laughs> it's super legit right now. <laughs> Maverick down there, Gray Ghost, Gray Maverick Ghost. Uh, and, uh, so um, there was oh man totally lost my my train of thought oh no what was I talking about it was you were talking not... about how uh, we were going to buzz the tower after after this <laughs> that would it could be, be awesome. a rum it could be a rum reason for the reason I don't remember what I'm talking about uh, we haven't you're seen talking about content any... droughts we've got Curse of Osiris and you know last week on the show I was. I was with you. I was very hopeful that Curse of Osiris could right a lot of wrongs. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. as I've thought about it over the course of this week, the things that, that Curse of Osiris could bring to the table, things like, you know, an increased loot pool would be uh, going a very, you know, just a, a far away in terms of uh, what could help improve this game. I think that obviously we have fewer raids which you brought up and that's going to play into the amount of content that's available i think that they need to do something and we've got private matches so you know hold on chat don't go crazy but they need to do something more with crucible to make Mm -hmm. it just enjoyable for me to go into it and want to play that experience and i think what's missing in crucible for me right now is when i go in with my friends i like to I like to screw with them a little bit, you know? I like to tease them based on what they got or didn't get in drops or what right. their, you know, kill count was and different metrics like that. And obviously we get some data, but you know, they took a couple steps back, I think both in terms of showing us the rewards of our fellow guardians when we go into those experiences. And I think that they need to tweak that. They need to bring that back and and just make the other thing is fours are just a little bit tough. I don't know. I fours. I thought it would fit and sit well with me, but for some reason I'm craving the the craziness, the chaos of sixes, and then mm-hmm. I'm also cra- craving. Uh, Yuna, you're muted, by the way. Um, I'm also craving like the tight coordination of threes. Did you say phrasing? Did you say phrasing? No, but I've been talking this whole time. Oh, I keep saying. Yuna's like, also on the show, yeah, guys. Exist. She's here this yes, week. Yes, I exist. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Even at the start, when you said, you know, we're going to welcome Yuna, at Lala, she waved instead of saying hi, guys. Well, well, that's For our audio exactly li- listeners, really she waved thing. to you. In my head, I'm like, uh, yeah. <laughs> I need to say something. Yuna, what's your take on all this? Um, honestly, like, cause I know Mark and I were talking about it the other day cause we started playing a new game this week. You know what? Like with, with D1, it had that just like ephemeral quality where if I had my day off and you know, I'm a mom and you know, and I work full time and I have the dog and I have a house and I have all kinds of stuff to do. <laughs> when I was playing D1, I would literally be, it's my day off in front of the TV 
playing all day, like to the point where my husband would come home and be like, really? <laughs> I'm like, yeah. <laughs> and, but, you know, I would get up and like make dinner and then I'd go back to playing. All but, right. you know, I didn't play all week. And it wasn't yeah. because I don't like the game. Like, I definitely want to preface this. Anything I say from now on, I want to preface with, it's not that I don't like the game. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. That's what's confusing about it. I do like the game. And even, okay, like, for instance, uh, you know, you're thinking, well, it's because she's hit the wall, like, right? Like, it's because Yuna has hit 305 and everything's maxed out. No, nope, that's actually I'm not, not 305 it. not at all. Right. On any of my characters, I'm not 305. Yeah. At all. I just, I don't feel the rush. Yeah. to do it and I don't yeah. feel like I have to do it because I can do everything that I want to do with 298 300 and so, yeah okay so let me ask you this question um, and I'm not I'm not naysaying at all I'm just in the interest of of destiny science here if you were running the raid and you were like man I just I need this one piece of gear or I need just like a few more lights uh, light levels or power levels, as we call mm -hmm. it now, uh, would you be more interested in playing? Yes. If it were something that I really, really wanted, I would absolutely play it. And it's not even like I don't want to play it. I could get on and play right now. But mm -hmm. I don't, you know, I don't wake up on my days off being like, man, how can I do my house stuff and my momming and also play a lot of Destiny today? Right. It just takes a back seat now. Yeah. Um, but you yeah. know what? That's okay. It is. There's lots of other stuff, and you know, typically my my gaming tends to ebb and flow a little bit. Anyways, this time of year, just because it gets so crazy with my job because of the holiday, because mm -hmm. I work retail, mm -hmm. and but yeah, yeah, but yeah, no, yeah it's, so there's just I, like a spark missing to make me like get off my keister and then sit on my keister in front of the TV. <laughs> First, yeah. you put your right foot in. <laughs> no, that's, um, I'm, so, you're not gonna make me say it. <laughs> but I'm thinking about singing it, but we're we are PG. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I agree, and uh, yeah, I think the 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 ideal situation, and I went over some of this, how to handle a content drought uh, yesterday, um, and and you know play different <clears throat> play different challenges and things, and then even also play different games with your fire team that's totally fine that's acceptable like I, I think what's really important is to manage your guilt at a, at a point like this like don't you don't need to feel guilty or salty towards the makers of the game that we as as players who uh have played destiny i mean think about the many how many hours we put into destiny we've put in enough hours in destiny that it's not it it sh we should be have conquered the game we should have right if we hadn't conquered the game by now there's maybe we might have something like wrong with us like or or our you know what i'm saying like right. we played so many hours we're experts at the game we played the crap out of the beta when the d2 beta came out uh so we, we're experienced players and so basically we've chewed through the content uh to the point where we're ready for a um we're ready for a new batch of content uh, the 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 Curse of Osiris trailer came out. It is epic. It looks incredible. It teases at some very very fun things uh, to the point that um, I'm excited about it. I, I'm definitely I'm not saying to you, hey, when Curse of Osiris comes out, no, I'm not. I'm crossing my arms. I'm not playing that Curse of Osiris because I'm salty or anything like that. Right. I'm excited for it, and I know you guys are as right. well. I'm super excited for it, man. That looks freaking sweet. It does. Okay. Like it does. I cannot wait to play that. So in 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 uh Okay, you but know. you know, in in all all respect, right, we've we've we have mm -hmm. a teaser trailer, we obviously have a list of improvements that are coming to the game. My biggest fear here and, and as a as a pharmacist in training, I'm 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 generally risk averse. So I'm gonna set my expectations extremely low here and what I see is likely going to be a lot of what we saw in Destiny Two, which is exciting on the surface but probably fairly shallow destiny one or or you know no in destiny 2 right i think the oh, destiny right. 2 destiny in general in was okay. was very flashy and enjoyable on the surface but after you mm -hmm. get past that 
you know, fairly shallow in terms of of the depth actually to the content in the game. And I'm going to go into Curse of Osiris with that type of expectation. Um, that way, if it is deep in terms of content, if it does carry us through five months worth of, uh, of time of playing this game, I'm going to be happy. But if I go into it expecting this to be like a Taken King type expansion, I- I'm just concerned that I'm going to run into a situation where I'm going to be very disappointed. Yeah, and that definitely could happen. Um, if you're if you're hanging your hat on it becoming uh, one expansion coming out and changing the game on such a huge level, now there are uh, silver linings to it um, in that uh, the community outrage over over Iron Banner was great, right? It was like, what is going on with this Iron Banner? Um, it's funner to play like the you know the the casual game type that at least changes. It's not called casual. It's called. Is it called casual? No, anyway, quick play. Quick play, right, yeah, because at least it changes your game type up. Uh, so it feels like there was a response to that in the way that Iron Banner is going to be handled um, after you know after the, the update or after the uh, content release. So it, it could be that they've listened enough and they have designed the game in a way. Like, do you think that when... Um, you know, content releases came out in Destiny 1 and people were really unhappy uh, that they didn't want to change it. I mean, like, people were outraged about Thorn in year one. Like, oh my gosh, please fix Thorn. This is terrible. Like, And they, they left it that way for like a year, right? It was like a year. And, you know, it's because they're working on other things in the studio. Like, And I'm sure right now they, they hear the community outrage. They want to change it. Now, what we're looking at is can they change it uh, based on the way they've done the infrastructure of Destiny 2? Um, so is the is the platform of Destiny 2 enough of a, a different animal than Destiny 1 that they literally can make a course correction at this point? Or, number two, is the, is the game plan for Destiny 2 different enough is it going to build up into this different thing enough to satisfy more hardcore players? So those are the two things that that we don't know yet. We don't know until Curse of Osiris comes out. Right. And I am a glass half full kind of guy. I, I'm I'm going to say uh, I'm 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 hopeful. I'm I'm definitely hopeful that that is the case. And uh, I, I do have faith in Bungie as a company that is excellent. Excellent. Is that a word? Excellent. 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 No, uh, excellent. Excellent. I'm making excellent. it. Excellent. So the one the one thing I want to point at at this point is um, the thing that got me back into games uh, because I played Halo 2 um, and then I did not play any really video games after that until Halo ODST Firefight brought me back into gaming. Not even the campaign, I didn't give a crap. Uh, I don't care. Um, Halo, the firefight brought me back in. And it was this game type where you went in and there were waves of aliens. The, the difficulty and the teamwork and the the ammo vacuum or the ammo uh, struggle, power weapon struggle, all that stuff was so well balanced and so perfect that... As a microcosm of a game, I played Firefight until a new version of Firefight came, and then I played that as well. So it, I do have faith that Bungie, as game designers, have the ability to create magical microcosms. So that's what keeps me hopeful about Curse of Osiris. I'm hopeful that when it comes out, there will be this thing in there, uh, and, I, and I wish for this in every content release, um, that will keep us hooked and that we will be like, you know what? Like we got, you know, we got 94.1% done last week when we tried it. I would love it if we even got 94.2. I wouldn't care if we got 94 even again. Do you know what I'm saying? Like to the point where you care so much about that content and it's so fun that you don't, you don't mind what happens, right? You're going to have a blast doing it, and you would be happy to see even just a tiny bit of, a, a, of an improvement from your fire team. Uh, and you want to talk about it between times, what went wrong, uh, what went right. Uh, and I feel like that's the one thing that maybe hasn't been happening in Destiny 2 as much. 
Um, in Destiny 1, I, I, we had conversations about encounters and raids, what went right, what went wrong, what we could do next time, what loadouts we might change, and what what strategy we, strategies we might use. And those aren't really conversations that we're having about Destiny 2. Right. Um, because, and you brought this out last week, Gray, it's because there's basically one way to do it, possibly two. There's one loadout that is optimal. You know, it's not set up for challenges. So there's there, it's a very rigid uh, raid uh, the way that it is. Like it has to be sure. done in a certain way. Uh, there's not a whole lot of room for let's do it, you know, all these different ways. Um, and there's not a whole lot of room for conversation. And to be honest with you, sometimes the lead up to games and the conversations you have and the planning you do before and the conversations you have after are just as much fun as the game, and it certainly is the case if it's a community game. So I think that we need content that brings us back to that point, and I think that, honestly, is the it factor, the ephemeral thing that is missing, uh, as far as I'm concerned. that's mm -hmm. That was a tirade. I'm really sorry. That took, no, I'm not sure. No, we're still on this, this week in Destiny, so yeah. <laughs> we haven't Ooh. even got into our segments yet. But um, So that, you know, that kind of harkens to the state of the game from, from my perspective, and this is the start of a journey. Um, I, and I, I believe that we got off on a, a good path to begin with, you know, Bungie has certainly toted the fact that they're, they built this game on a much more flexible foundation than destiny one. And here we are a few months into the game and I'm still waiting for Bungie to prove it. You know, there's still things that are going on that cause them to take down, you know, core aspects of the game that if this is such a flexible pl platform, their fixes should be a lot quicker. Um, the things that the community is asking for should be implemented in a more timely manner. I'm not necessarily getting the feeling that this game, the foundation, the the engineering that it's built upon is as flexible as what they they had first kind of proposed to us. I'm feeling a lot more like, the things are hard coded into the system and it takes a lot of work and effort to fix them if, if something's broken. But with that said, that's a bit of a tangent. I do want to go to Yuna and see what her weekend destiny has been like. You're muted. <laughs> She's enthusiastically saying it. nothing. Ah, <laughs> ah. I was going to go around. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're right. La, 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 la. Uh, but I'm also typing, so I want to make sure I'm not going click, 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 click. <laughs> I'm like an ape on the keyboard. Um, <laughs> your shoes are heavy. And yes, I'm like, bum, bum, bum. Um, I mean, honestly, like, I didn't play Destiny this week. I didn't log in at all. I haven't. Um, am I going to play on Friday? Yeah, because I definitely do want to. Um, you know, play with a faction rally. Um, but even last week after we got off the show, I didn't even log in. And it wasn't because, you know, I'm like, ugh, down with Destiny. It was just like, eh, I have other things to do. Like, my day off, like, you know, I spent time with my daughter and, you know, I probably did more stuff than I probably, you know, typically do on my days off. Um, right. I got more stuff yeah. done. Um, it just didn't include done. Destiny things. Yeah. But, um, I mean, going back to Mark's Tirade, um, it's the carrot on the stick I think is missing for me. Because I'm a very, uh, I mean, at least with Destiny 1, I was always after visual gear. Like, gear that makes my character look really awesome. And by the end of D1, I had this set that I literally didn't even care what the stats were, I would just infuse that up because it was so freaking awesome. Mm -hmm. um, I don't have something like that yet. I don't have a set where I'm like, man, I have to get that. In fact, mm -hmm. I know people work so hard on this and I really, really appreciate those people. I'm not a fan <laughs> of a lot of the sets at all. Even the raid one. I'm not like, I hate the raid cloak. I was going over it with um, a guy from work and he's like, man, the raid hunter cloak is awesome. And I'm like, Eh. And he's like, what are you talking about? I'm like, not my cup of tea at all. Yeah. It, eh. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's, I don't like like the extra padding that they added to the hunter Hot pants. Eh. <laughs> just just the an anatomical stuff on the lady hunters are a little weird. Yeah. 
We got some we got some powerful thighs, which is great. But we have a huge, <laughs> huge thigh gap, which doesn't exist on a woman. Um, oh. Oh. <laughs> what? I think I think Mark and I could probably safely comment on this section of the show, right? Wouldn't you say that this is a safe part of us to just pitch in? <laughs> But I mean, what, like what I'm saying is, like, there's nothing, uh, there's not, there's no carrot on the end of the stick. There's no, you know, perfect God roll gun that I'm like, man, I have to keep playing this over and over and over to get. There's no Gallahorn. I mean, right. you could argue and say Orpheus Rig for me is a Gallahorn, but the amount of, the amount of duplicates that I keep getting is really turning me off trying to grind for that because it's so disappointing. It's not even like, oops, darn it, got to keep going back to the grind. That's like. Why did you give me my seventh helmet of the exact same kind when I don't have all of the helmets? <laughs> right, right. And I know they're working on that, so you yeah, know. Yeah. One, yeah. one so of my concerns with that. I'll get it, but I'm just not like, you know. One of my my concerns is that obviously we're crying out for for more loot in the game, and admittedly, like there is very very little loot compared to what was at the end of destiny one it's and it's hard to fault Bungie because they started from scratch right they didn't just right. hard import and and they're trying to give us a new experience even with that the loot that we do get especially on the weapons they don't feel dramatically different within the same archetype right you go from certain pulses to other pulses and there are subtle differences but it, it, it doesn't remind me of Destiny 1 where, you know, you would know the difference between a Nerwin's Mercy and a, a Grasp of Malak, right? They would have different right. feels to them. They'd have different stability perks and, and different, you know, just different aspects. I'm a little worried they're going to dump a ton of loot on us and it's going to be reskinned variants of what we've already experienced, which already isn't varied enough to make it meaningful right. to choose one gun over the other. There's a few exceptions, but I don't want a few exceptions. I want a dozen exceptions. I want not even a dozen. I want dozens of exceptions to say that right. I'm picking this gun for a specific reason. Right now, I feel like I'm picking a gun just because I, I don't have a good reason. You know, they, right. they don't feel different enough. Yeah, I, and I think this all goes back to what we talked about and I told you this, I think we were talking about this before the show, Gray. I said, uh, remember when I told you, be careful, there will, I said, brace for a content gap. Because the end of Destiny 1. Did you say content they, or they, thigh? I, I couldn't hear the, you. <laughs> Con, content. Okay. I said, look forward content. to a gap, but brace for a content gap. Uh, and so it, it, I said, there, was, there are four raids that are current. Um, you know, at at the end of Destiny One, uh, we're going into a, a a a new platform. I said that the the likelihood that Destiny Two is going to ship with more than one raid is very very slim. Oh, yeah. uh, so we're going to have one big end game content thing, and it doesn't matter uh, what what you do to prepare yourself. Going from four to one is just not something that. And it's a thing that you don't even realize is happening, right? Like, like you brought this out before the show, uh, you know, or maybe you brought it out at the beginning of the show. It was great. Uh, you, you're running Crota. I haven't ran Crota in four weeks because, right. you know, hey, I haven't needed to. It's not been the featured raid. We did the featured one every week and it, it kept things different and varied and you were constantly mixing up your your loadout and a lot of those things were oh there's this one gun that came from this raid and i'm going to use it during this raid because or the way they did they structured ornaments too was a huge part you right. had to get the armor from that raid and then the enough ornaments to to actually apply them I, exactly. they just the, the carrot as you know was saying was there and then the content was varied enough that you were interested in doing it and there is something to be said about proficiency and mm -hmm. while we are dedicated destiny players we are certainly not the best destiny players in the world and while we can go in and we can do callus and we can run that raid the leviathan raid pretty consistently right. without too many hiccups we're not standing here saying that well we're not standing at all we're sitting in our ships but we are <laughs> not saying that we could hop into prestige and three man it, you know yeah and no, that no. is more and that, the and level of proficiency we either. had in destiny one like we could mm -hmm. go right. in and three man crota you know we mm -hmm. could 
we understood those encounters and they allowed themselves to allow you to be an expert. And we're still working towards it with Callus and the Leviathan raid. But Mark, your expression says it all. The interest also isn't it isn't there, right? Yeah. There just isn't the same interest to say, I want to practice this to become really excellent at it. I, I don't feel it. Yeah. yeah. Right. Right. Yeah, uh, and if we're, hey, let's go have some fun. Let's get it done. But not like, man, I got to... I got to beat this and be like so amazing at it. And right. man, I want to be able to blindfold this. Nope. Right. Well, and that might, what I'm saying is I think my whole point with all that was um, we might get there, right? Uh, you know, you get two or three content releases under our belts and it feels like, okay, so let me give you one more ray of sunshine here. Uh, then we'll start with our, uh, our weekend gaming. Um, <laughs> which means the things we played instead of Destiny this week. Uh, one True. one more thing though, there there is another ray of sunshine on the on the horizon uh, for for that. They 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 use the terminology new raid content right when they're talking about what's coming out, and I don't hold down any hope that we're getting like even a new room or any any kind of anything other than maybe some extra loot. Uh, or extra challenges to do for the current raid that we have. Right. But mm -hmm. when Crota came out, when Dark Below was released, they did zero to make us still want to play Vault of Glass. Zero. Like, we didn't sure. give a crap about Vault of Glass anymore because, I mean, other than just because it was fun. Um, so we didn't do it, right? right? So the fact that they're saying new raid content tells me that they realized that was a mistake. Uh, the way the Age of Triumph was handled, it tells me that they realize not having everything you've made as currently, uh, as currently, well, just part of the content, le right? Existing. Legitimate. I don't want to say they legitimate. As, it. as yeah, yeah, as currently. Oh, there's a word that I can't get out. Uh, but yeah, it, they, they made it where it was outdated. Um, and they, they re that's like, why do that? Like, look, you've made this awesome raid in Vault of Glass. Why wait, you know, three, you know, two and a half years to make it rele relevant? Relevant. That's right. the word I'm looking for. Right. So yeah. it tells me that what they're doing now is that actually they're going to bring everything forward every time right and that makes perfect sense right like you come forward you can still do callus to get you know maybe higher light drops or or things mm -hmm. that help you currently right um also along with what's going on in curse of osiris right so then you've got two things you're doing right the third thing comes out the third expansion then you've got three like kind of in-game products that you that are relevant at the time they keep bringing it up as they go um, and that makes everything relevant as they go. And I think that um, is the silver lining for me. Uh, if you if you think about Destiny One, the way that it worked was we're like, we're constantly like, God, I wish they would, you know, update the raid so that it, you know, that people want to run it again. And we said that for two years before that it actually, you know, two and a half years before it actually happened. Right. I think they've listened. I think they're going to change the way that they do content release to the to the point that every time new content comes out, the old content even though you've done it a bunch of times, it's still going to be relevant. Mm -hmm. Silver lining. So what else did you guys play this week? What was your weekend gaming like? I played Snipper Clips. I just want to say that. Yeah. Finally. Snipper Clips? Snipper Clips. That, it's not a circumcision I game. I was going to say, oh it's like your bar mitzvah God. game. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is, is this why we have our own channel now? <laughs> <laughs> thank you for the auto host planet destiny Destiny, please don't stop um so um snipper anyway clips. yeah it's a puzzle it's a couch co-op game for your switch you really owe it to yourself and to m to get this game and play it together and what the way that it works is you've got two like cup shaped people right and you're trying to, and, and if you walk over each other and you hit the, the cut button, you can cut shapes out of the other person. And then like, okay, oh, let me just give you, healthy. yeah, it's super, yeah, it's super, super healthy. Uh, su yeah. It's super not as creepy as it sounds. Uh, so like, let me give you a, for instance, in one of the levels, uh, there were balloons that were on the ceiling, right? And uh, you have to cut out a hook shape into the other player and then jump up and then hook 
and pull the the string of the balloon down, right? So that you can get to it. And then while you're pulled down, you need to cut a point onto the other player and they need to jump off something and pop the balloon. And that's like, so it's all these like situations you have to figure out. Um, and together, like, you know, you have to work together to do all of it. And it's really, really fantastic. And you can play with up to four people. So it's a perfect couch co-op game. And then also, and this will, I'll pass it over to Yuna for this, but she talked me into playing Final Fantasy fourteen. It's my first MMO. And I want to just say what a beginner I am, uh, what a one out of ten I am at doing menus inside uh, an MMO. Well, I mean, pain. I'm going to be fair. That menu is really obtuse for what it is because it because it was originally designed for mouse and keyboard. So It was, and I just ended up plugging my mouse and keyboard in to be able to just not continue to <laughs> let me down and jazz down on an ongoing basis. <laughs> uh, I would get stuck where the menu was up on the front and I couldn't get it to go away. I mean, I was like seriously like old lady oh, with a smart remote. You gotta press the O button. I know they kept it's not a press- euphemism. <laughs> we welcome <laughs> all older women to our audience. Uh, please uh, don't take offense to Mark Square's comments. Unalala, what has been your week in gaming outside of Destiny? What have you done? Final Fantasy? Uh, Final Fantasy. So, yeah. Destiny is what replaced Final Fantasy fourteen for me. Mm-hmm. So I was playing. Uh, so Final Fantasy eleven was my first MMO ever. So when Final Fantasy fourteen, A Realm Reborn came out, I'm like, yes. So like I did the beta test. I did it. And that was and- the second generation of it, right? Like they launched yes. it and it was terrible, and then they relaunched it and it was yeah. actually pretty good. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I, I gotta say, like, props to Square because. I mean, yeah, they launched it, and it was horrendous, and people did not like it. Mm-hmm. They literally, they took it offline. Mm-hmm. And they stopped the service for, like, an entire year. They rebuilt the whole thing, and, and th- like, the opening cutscene is them literally destroying the world to start fresh. <laughs> yeah. And it's it was awesome. I mean, like, kudos on them. Like, you know... They knew that they had something underneath it that was going to be really awesome, and rather than just abandoning it, um, they did definitely, you know, put their money where their mouth is, and they worked on it, and it was fantastic. Now, very, very, very different game from Destiny, but one Mm. enormous similarity. Yeah, it's best played with a group of really awesome people. Mm -hmm. And what happened to me was my real-life friends kind of drifted off, and I got left with all of our, you know, but you know our guild mates that were not so nice people. Oh. So so they weren't fun to play with. Um, and then so I moved to Destiny, Day One Destiny, and I hadn't played since. Like I had to go through account recovery and everything. But uh, they brought back my favorite class ever, which is a red mage. Um, so I'm really excited to play that. I transferred the, to the wrong realm. Mm-hmm. So I have to yeah. wait one more day before I can transfer to the right one because there's a cooldown. But I'm really excited to keep playing on that and, you know, have that fill my time in between content ga- gaps on Destiny. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we've been playing with Jez a little bit. Uh, Gray, yeah. there's room in our fire team. It's not called a fire team over there. I don't know what it's called. It's just uh, a party. A party. There's a, a party, party over there. Yeah. Party. So. Yeah, so jazz is really fun. Um, I I actually, yeah, we do, uh, Lawn Boy's asking, we do play that on PS4. Uh, but the thing is, there's cross-play. So even if you're yeah. playing it on PC, you can still play. Like, Jez was playing on PC in a PS4 party with us and playing on PC. What an anyway. idea. Man, mm-hmm. that, I, you know, we're almost going to go right into my segment here. Oh, so we'll just, we'll just gray. pause there. Yeah. <laughs> and and what I'm going to just bring up, the only thing that I really jumped into this week, uh, I played a little bit of Super Mario Odyssey, which it has been a, a very fun game. Um, it's very different, obviously, even more different, I would say, from Destiny than, than Final Fantasy because there isn't a, an online cooperative component. You know, you're not interacting with friends necessarily. Uh, and it's a game that's built so that adults can enjoy it but that a younger audience can also enjoy the game and certainly the mechanics in the game are a little bit more simplified than what you're going to expect in in a lot of t for teen games like like destiny or even more advanced than that so it's been kind of nice that you can kind of 
zone out a little bit. You don't have to go quite as try hard, be quite as focused. Um, mm-hmm. It still requires enough that it keeps you interesting, interested in the game. And I know Mark, you picked it up as well for your, for your switch. Um, yeah, I haven't played and, it. Yet, you know, there's some goofy things about the story and the mechanics, but they make it work. That's the weirdest thing. Like, here, I want to go play a game about, you know, a guy who loses the girl he likes to some crazy dinosaur creature who steals her every away. Every time. Every, every time. time. And then Up the security, this, Mario. this particular story, right? Like, I could just imagine at the Nintendo boardroom, it's like, you know, it's been a lot of years since we've done a Mario game, and I've got the perfect idea. Right, stop me if you've heard it. Okay, this guy who's like a dinosaur thing, we'll call him just like Bowser, <laughs> steals a princess, the same princess. <laughs> and same. okay, all right, I'm liking it so far. And damn, where's th- the princess's agency in this? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and like Kim Bauer. And then we're gonna make the entire game about planning a wedding. <laughs> is and the what? hero. Is it really? Yeah, the it, hero what, like is going Peach to and Mario track. Get married? Yeah, Bowser and Princess are going to get married, and uh, it, well, I, I, obviously Mark didn't get very far in the game. <laughs> we are going to follow them all. as they are gaining, as they are trying to gather things for their wedding, and wait. and that's how wait, we is, try to wait, stop. Is, is Peach like brainwashed? No, no, Peach is is captive. Right? She's not participating necessarily. Like, she doesn't want to get married. She's just a hostage. Oh, it's like an Ice King thing, like in, from Adventure Time. I think maybe Saki was involved in creation of this game. Yeah. <laughs> like- well, and then I, I just, like, the board of directors are like, oh, why have we never thought of this idea? <laughs> <laughs> so look, tell me this how does the co-op the couch co-op work do you know um so okay i didn't even get to that part okay i like it so far but we need a sidekick there has to be a sidekick okay well i don't really have a good idea so let's just go with a magic hat let's just have a magic hat from a magic hat world and maybe the magic <laughs> hat could be thrown on things oh okay done a magic sign hat? sign on the dotted line yeah oh wow. cappy yeah Is that's it's, it's a hat that you wear. And there is a cool mechanic in that you can, th- if something is not wearing a hat, you can throw your hat on it and you will transform into that thing. You will take it over. What? Oh, yeah. Creepy. So it's not just a hat. It's a hat with psychic uh, powers that, that actually take <laughs> over so like the persona that it's wearing. Hat. I mean, Ooh, bizarre, uh. bizarre. But... You, you would pitch that game and you would say, I'm going to go play Destiny 2. That's where you'd be wrong because they actually make it work very well. Yeah, yeah. Like these, the whole puzzle mechanics of, okay, so like in Super Mario Brothers, right, there's those crazy bullet bomb things, right? Yeah. And usually in the yeah. side scroller, you're trying to dodge them, jump up and down. Sometimes you can land oh, on them, which will make them go away. Yeah. This, you throw your hat on it, and you turn into it, and you use it to manipulate the environment to complete the puzzle. Ooh. I that like does it. actually sound pretty awesome. Yeah. yeah. So they do some some neat things, and I, I have been enjoying it. Um, it's it's going to be a very good game. It'll probably be, if not the best, probably the second best, arguably, game for the Switch with uh, the, the Legend of Zelda being probably, you know, up there in terms of which is actually the best game for the Switch, and it'll be one of right. those two. Yeah, mm-hmm. except for the bar mitzvah games. <laughs> probably not this, <laughs> yeah, cutting things out game. to hook balloons. Um, <laughs> sounds awesome, too. I'm oh, sure oh, Nintendo loved the, nice the pitch on it. Brisk game. We must have. Yeah. <laughs> but that actually leads me very well into uh, Gray's uh, Ghost Stories, or Gray's GGs. And this week, it's going to be um, Games Generosity is the two Gs that I'm going to use for, for Gray's GGs. So my question to each of you is, if you could pick one element from a recent game to be released to throw into Destiny 2, What's the game, and what is the element that you'd like to be thrown into the game? And we'll start off with Mark Square. Okay, so uh, I played I've played very few other games uh, that aren't Destiny since Destiny came out. Um, that's one of the reasons why I'm excited to like talk other games because good night am I behind. I did, however, play Horizon Zero Dawn. Uh, it was too good not to. Uh, the screenshots people are posting are too beautiful not to experience that world. 
Um, so what I would like to see from that game is the way that the traps work. Um, so like in Destiny, you know, you're a Night Stalker, you shoot a bow, your your Void Anchor will wait, you know, depending on what, you know, what skill tree you're using, and it'll pop out. Uh, but in, in the way Horizon Zero Dawn works is actually you fire it twice, and it creates like a, a tripwire that goes across a certain area uh, so that you can... You you can basically your your area of control is larger, and there's also different elements. So like you can like put like a uh, electrical tripwire and so on and so on. So like I would I would like to see that implemented to where uh, the the supers in Destiny are a little bit more, and you have to kind of forget about PvP for the for these ideas to work. Uh, there needs to be a oh, separation. I, between. I don't know that I even would. Like, no, so no, my, that would be my awesome. mind put one on each side of the door, have them trip, and be like, "Ha, yeah. gotcha, suckers!" My mind first uh, went to, yeah. uh, do you remember the um, the strike where that it was in Destiny One, and the crazy priest takes the eye out of the ogre, and is shoot yes. he's shooting yes. you with the ogre yes. eye cannon, oh, right? That is such a hard and one. Worst. Yeah, well, right. it's it's a fun, it's a, I, it's a very enjoyable strike. But imagine if you could set traps like what you can in Horizon Zero Dawn, elemental mm-hmm. traps mm-hmm. that when you get to the part of that final boss fight where the ogre just goes, you know, ape. I was going to say a bad word, ape crazy <laughs> on on you and starts <laughs> chasing you around the map. Um, the show is T for teen. The, uh, imagine if you have somebody on your fire team who's like, all right, I'm going to aggro the ogre. I'm going mm-hmm. to set traps, which are going to stun him like in horizon zero dawn. Like yeah. I remember the, the saber tooth crazy robot things. And I would set up these traps in certain ways so that when they chased me, it would, uh, it would deactivate them or yeah. it would stun them so right. that I could then do damage to them. I mean, that okay. would be a fantastic mechanic. In Destiny. I agree. Yep. I agree. So tell me, uh, just really quick, how do you design a class for Warlock and for Titan to do the same? Right? Like, how? what What lore-wise makes sense? Like, it makes sense for a Night Stalker. Let's be honest. Like, that makes perfect sense. Or do you not? Mm-hmm. Do you not? I think you just give that to the I hunter almost think you make it a weapon. Ooh. Right? Okay. You make it like a heavy yeah. weapon. Yeah, that allows you to do these trip wire wires. Oh, yep. oh, I like that. Or a power weapon. I'm sorry. You're hired. Yeah, that's that's how I would do it. And then it's agnostic <laughs> yeah. to whatever class is yeah. actually using it. Yeah, it doesn't matter. And you could put oh, on like different uh, elemental mods so that it could hold whatever charge well, you want it to be. Ooh, since the Telesto is probably coming back. Yeah. That would be really cool for the Telesto. You shoot one end to the other and then it links up. The person goes there and goes Oh yeah, and like all the like, you know, the the sparkles from the Telesto. Yeah. Oh yeah. That I know that what if sparkles. oh man, this would be cool too. What if like the hunter, right, had a special node that when it used a trap weapon that them specifically, right? The 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 hunter only could pick this as a node on their character they were invisible what <laughs> was that, was that, oh, i love okay. it put it in the game on the on the weapon <laughs> on the like the trap itself is invisible oh so you can't okay. right. you can't see it i thought you were trolling us <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah. Okay. So I no, but like saying. you could like, take the classes class and it. and make it specific to the weapon so that they could do more things. Like maybe the Titan, the if you have an arc trap, it does more damage. Or if that it's the Hunter, sense. it's invisible. You can only see kind of the shimmer of it. Uh, I like it. Yeah. So there's like basically you inst- you 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 equip the weapon as a Hunter, you get this perk. Mm-hmm. Uh, you equip the weapon as a warlock, you get this one, and Titan, you get the. Oh, I like that. Oh, that's yeah. a really cool idea. That's actually a really great way to liven up the guns, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nice concept. And make you want to actually play some of the other classes. Like, if there were some other weapons like that that was like, uh, you know, you, you put it on your hunter, it does this. You put it on your, your warlock, it does this. You put it on your Titan, it does this. It might make me more likely to want to make something that's not a hunter as well, you know? Yeah. Right. Ooh, kudos, yeah. man! You're on like fire that. tonight. Yeah, that'd be interesting. All right. I'd, I'd All like right. it. What about? I'd like it from PvP about? too, because you could 
take certain maps which have some of those those hallway type or door type uh mm-hmm. you know choke points and you mm-hmm. could set up traps in those you know quite well and then right. you could send a rabbit right you send a rabbit to go aggro and flush out through that that area and then all of a sudden you have a, a damage of effect in an, in an area yeah. and then the team yeah. collapses on it oh. you could do some interesting things with it what if the warlock one you you as a as a teammate you could walk directly through it without triggering it like it would only mm-hmm. trigger on enemies like you had to jump over it for the titans and the hunters like actually jump over a physical wire mm-hmm. but with a with a warlock you would just you could run through it it would be more deceptive like yeah you'd call you know, it phasing yeah sure. you would phase right through it i'm yeah, digging it that'd be good oh, somebody should yeah. have or, some or sort of a poison it mechanic and drag too it behind you, you oh <laughs> Somebody should yeah, have a poison yeah. mechanic called, called where the goldfish effect. if they yeah. set it off, it, it means that they can actually take more. They Their defense goes down. Their resilience goes down um, right. if they set off that trap. That would be kind of an interesting mm-hmm. perk, too, like to poison. say, you know, this is also you have a trap, but it's it's laced in, in poison mm-hmm. that is also mm-hmm. going to decrease the resilience of anybody who's affected by it. I like it. I like it, Mark. That's a good idea. Uh, that would make some aspects of this game more interesting. Bungie, I'm in favor. Mm-hmm. Go for it. All right, Yuna, <laughs> to you. This. Madame, what do you have okay. for element from a game to throw into Destiny 2? Well, I'm going to... And this is something I've always wanted anyways. So it just so happens that we started playing Final Fantasy XIV, um, which had an expansion this summer. So it qualifies as new. And that mm-hmm. is going to be player and clan housing. Mm-hmm. Ooh, Give me yeah. something awesome. To, big like, spaceship. Yes, Give us big spaceship, on. please. Yeah, I mean, because this little spaceship, you know, now we can see inside the cockpits and everything. And that's not really going to be an option. But, you know, give us like, give us a clan ship or give us like some, I mean, there's so much area over by the farm. Make it so that it's instance and you can go out and have your own homestead with your clan. Ooh, and you can cool do too. things on it, and you know you can farm spin foil, and and you can have pets. Ooh, you get a cow. Oh, well, and if you like, I like the idea of if you can go and complete certain content in the game, you could come and bring back something for your house. Trophies, yeah, yes. mm-hmm. trophies like for your trophy. house. Let me like here's like Callus's really cool, head like... mounted above my fireplace, or our fireplace, yeah. Yeah. right? Our clan yeah. fireplace. Yeah. A chair that I can click on and actually sit without phasing through it. Like, mm-hmm. give me those things. Right. Like, yeah, a little jukebox. <sighs> yes, give me those things. All of those things. Mm-hmm. You know, I want a bedroom and I want to put like my big phase lighter over my bed because it's awesome. <laughs> <That> <laughs> you is, know, I like, so that. like, yes. <laughs> Until it idea. falls off the wall in the middle of the night. And cuts Danger your head sleeps off. here. You know. <laughs> <laughs> you danger lala <laughs> sleeps here yeah danger yeah i think they could do a lot with that and i mean they it's incorporating data right the data they have into some sort of interface in the game uh which doesn't feel like a menu it doesn't feel like reading stats off of a, a sheet but like you're imagining where Okay, here's trophies, right? Here's Callus's head above our mantle because our clan was able to take him down, or at least his robot version mm-hmm. of himself down. And then, Whoa. oh, here's all these notches on the fireplace mantle. What do those stand for? Well, it's every time. Yeah, Mark. Okay. <laughs> every time that That's our clan took down Callus, there's another notch. Wow, we've got 50 notches here on our fireplace mantle. <laughs> notches mark can you believe it <laughs> for those who are listening online you can't see how red mark's face is right now it's a hot mirror. i can honestly say i have visited mark's house uh he does not put notches uh, on his bed bed frame that's not something that i i noticed uh, no i would if anything ever happened <laughs> it's not for lack of trying uh <laughs> Oh gosh! I think it's a good time for me to bring up uh, what I think Destiny should add. All right, this is, you guys are gonna have to stretch your imagination a little bit, but okay. imagine you're wearing a hat, and you could take this hat. <laughs> <laughs> and you could throw it at anything not wearing a hat. <laughs> Uh, 
Also, for our audio listeners, Mark just choked on his <laughs> bourbon. Or, sorry, his rum. Really bad. Really bad. He'll be back. Uh, completely a joke. That would not fit in the game at all. Uh, Cappy does not need a place in Destiny 2. But, uh, you know, Activision has actually put this mechanic in uh, their Call of Duty games. For a number of years now, we have seen it. Um, not the Cap thing. Th- you can go to their social space and you can play old Activision games in the social space. So what I think would be kind of cool from Bungie, depending on what they have in terms of licensing agreements, knowing that they were owned by Microsoft, but even prior to that, let's say we go to the tower and there's some sort of a terminal or there's an arcade or some interface where you could actually play old Bungie games in the social space. You know, I think that Halo could be off limits to a certain degree, just depending on what their relationship with Microsoft and and that whole deal is. But think about even prior to Halo. Think of like um, uh, like Myth and things like that. Mm -hmm. Old Bungie games. I think it would be really cool for people like like me who did not necessarily play a lot of Bungie games growing up, and as that company Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. developed. To be able to say, you know, it'd be really cool and it would be a nice shout out to the former developers and current developers who worked on those projects to say, I want to see what that experience is like and I'm going to access it through your social space in Destiny 2. Yep. Yep. I I agree with that. That would be cool. Okay, so let me, uh, from the chat, um, Lawn Boy suggests Transmog, uh, which I agree. That would be great. Um, Yes. Yeah, so like it's t- like right now, currently in Destiny, you need to find a recovery set, right? Like a survivalist set, and they don't always look correct. Uh, I've learned to like it, uh, but yeah, yeah, that would be great. Good, good idea. <laughs> <That's> a- <laughs> that sounds like so sad. I learned to like it. Fall <laughs> <laughs> colors on it. <laughs> I can only eat porridge, so I learned to like it. <laughs> All right, and. <laughs> For the sake of, of time, as we are, we are unbelievably an hour into our show, my friends. Oh, uh, yeah. I think we should Zero move content, on to our next hour. segment. Uh, <laughs> what do we got, Mark? Uh, these. This is a, a segment idea that our content producer, G-Face DDS, came up with. Um, and it is called, The Raid is Perfect. They aren't glitches, they are modifiers. And this is uh, three clips that we've got today. Uh, I think we featured one clip from the raid, but you guys have seen this one on the show where we constantly died over and over. It was, uh, so it was like, we finished the gauntlet only just, and then we're in like this death loop where it's trying, you know, we're just reviving each other and laughing. So we're not going to show that one. You've seen that one, but these are some more things that, that happened, uh, in the raid. They're just little glitches, um, (laughs) that that make for funny situations. So let's roll that first Mm -hmm. one. And if you're watching on, on (laughs) iTunes, definitely check out our YouTube page, uh, grenades and horseshoes, just search it because, uh, these clips obviously will provide color commentary, but to get them in their full, you know, just full glory, you'll have to check it out either on our Twitch channel or at, at our YouTube channel. But here is segment one, clip one. Okay, so this G face, they they wipe at Callus. He he spawns in, and I like to call this clip "One is the loneliest number." <laughs> like it just says, "Waiting for ally to revive you," and there is no one there. It's just he's like looking around. Hey guys, guys, let's yep. fight Callus. Mm-hmm. Uh, yep. Guys, everybody went home. Everyone yep. had the diarrheas. <laughs> yeah, I've had this happen to me as well. And this is related toward when somebody on your fire team has a lot of, of latency, really high ping. And if there's oh. that much network discrepancy, I'm not sure what the, the deal is, but you don't load into the same Destiny server. Um, something okay. like that happens, the same instance of the game, because we had it where our fire team kept being split. And as you can see, Callus does not spawn in. So... Mm-hmm. A very odd situation what you end up having to do to fix it everybody leaves the fire team one by one until whoever is your your red bar the the person that's causing it leaves that fire team and then all of a sudden 
the encounter will load appropriately and then they can load back in. So if you have this happening to you, uh, you know, try that head to orbit, change who's the leader of the fire team, but try to do it one by one because you can isolate actually who the individual is that's causing the problem. Um, and then just kind of load back into the encounter. Then but you can you can blame them like aggressively and right. like forever. Blame yeah. <laughs> the only downside to well, this this whole plan and the whole situation here is this is game breaking if you do a lot of guided games. If this mm-hmm. happens to you in guided games, mm-hmm. it pretty much ruins the whole the the whole run, right? You have to oh, quit. Oh, really? For one, guided games oh, does not give you, you checkpoints. Finish. Yeah. There's so, no checkpoints in guided and games. And yeah. if you leave, you kind of get a penalty for leaving the fire team. So there's a couple drawbacks that, again, Bungie, obviously you want to encourage people to play guided games, but this type of a bug makes that really difficult. And it yeah, happens more than that. you would think. Yeah. And the other part of the I didn't include this clip, but there was a Nick sent, or Nicolian sent another clip <clears throat> where she, in that same encounter, G-Face spawned in the, in the throne room and she... Th- spawned on the jelly stairs you know outside you know like oh, the, yeah. yeah yeah outside so she actually spawned outside the throne room he spawned in the throne room by like you said different instances everything's gotten split up yeah so it's a little bit weird right. uh but yeah one is mm-hmm. the loneliest number when fighting callus in <laughs> fact two would be better than one but probably the other one would be callus so then it would be bad still mm-hmm. yeah so mm-hmm. bad bug bad bug yeah <laughs> what about the next one all right so we've, we've seen this in, in a lot of aspects of the game. Uh, it's the old floating cabal trick here. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, I'd like to say, though, that this part of the raid, opening the door, is my favorite. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, there's well, nothing this I like. like a total kill fest. It is. It's like a big firefight, if you will. Yeah. So uh, I'm super you know, into this part. You know what's really great? What? It's a hunter with an Orpheus rig. Uh, that Too would bad be I don't have one on PlayStation. <laughs> I can't get I can't get it either. And I can't get motivated enough to like grind to get one. <laughs> so we only let ourselves to blame for why we don't support the I blame our in Jesus is not a fan yeah. of mine. I find it somewhat interesting that this glitch that, that again, is fairly common in the game, the the Mm -hmm. levitating dead cabal, or just add in general that levitates Mm -hmm. when they're dead, um, does not despawn, but most of the other adds, after they're down for a few seconds, they despawn. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, So, yeah, kind of odd that that one kind of sticks in. I kind of wonder if its geometry being on the map is preventing other adds from actually spawning in at that time. Be kind of curious be. what's I going don't know. on on the backbone. Had, you and I have had a few too that not just stick like that, mm-hmm. but they'll start floating away like they've been hit with a fusion rifle, but not disintegrated, yeah. mm-hmm. and they'll just kind of float slowly oh. towards oh, the like, sky. Remember that? Oh, one? the one that I was able to snipe all the way to Jupiter. <laughs> she that just was kept amazing. shooting it. I'm like, I'm like, you go on some kind of government watch list if you just keep shooting yeah. dead bodies. I'm yeah, telling no, you that. I have to sure. so like I, I definitely have to upload that clip and edit it down because it was yeah. forever. But I was literally like getting my sniper and I was shooting it, and he yeah. he was like way up there. Like <laughs> there's no way I should have been hitting him, and I was still hitting him, and it was like going wee. It was like, fun. I'm like fighting big Vex that like have tons of health, and she's using all of her heavy to shoot this enemy that is in the sky, and I realized. <laughs> it's all uh, out. I really, I realized that I don't have any moral high ground because I do stuff like that all the time, and I'm like, I can't be mad at you. And, except you actively try to kill us with exploding barrels. Mine <laughs> is just harmless. Yeah, He's already the dead. Yeah. All right, I think we got one more clip here. We do. We do. So this is, there was a week where I was somewhere that wasn't at my house. Oh, I was on vacation, and Nicolian filled in for me in our usual uh, raid group there with... Uh, with uh, Paris and and you guys and Dakota and everybody dies. I think Paris was out that week too. And if you count, oh, right. beasts defeated three, four, this. five, six, seven more beasts. Imagine mm-hmm. that. There's a. I just, I just want to take a second here, and if you have to watch it on loop, I just want you to not only count that we did kill. It looks like a total of seven war beasts, which are not You're possible. Guilty. This is not the prestige, right? We this yeah, was just no. normal. Yeah. Um, but uh, look at those damage numbers a little bit. What do you guys? Uh, what do you guys see from those damage numbers uh, as they pop up? 
I see a name at the top. Seems like that name is Gregost. Yes. It's seven or seven. Kills, War Beast Defeated 2. Hey, ever 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 pretty nifty 50 540,000. 540,000, 770,000. That is respectable. Yeah. So not only did I'm we I'm a lower wipe, light level than everyone else. We wiped true. after killing seven dogs. <laughs> seven war beasts. Seven dogs in the normal raid, which only has six. That was a very yeah. weird situation. I have no yes, idea what happened. Yeah, because we're all like, we we did it, we did it. We're like, no, like, what's going on? I guess we didn't. Everyone's dog is dead. Okay. <laughs> twice, some of them. One yeah. of them yeah. twice. <laughs> uh, raid glitches. Yep. yep. At least it's not yep. teleporting ogres in uh, King's Fall. Oh man, I'll tell you what was the most frustrating is when Crota Hard came out. And he was so buggy to the point where he would just stand up and he, well, he just did whatever he wanted to. Crota just did, he was he just did. a savage. He was like, like, haha. Yeah. <laughs> I'm programmed to come in the room sometimes. Like, <laughs> <You're right. laughs> yeah, exactly. well, it's funny. Like, I obviously didn't play Destiny one year one, so I didn't get to experience right. this, but he must have been very uh, predictable in normal mode. So that when in when hard mode dropped and he started doing these crazy things, that it would just freak you out. <laughs> like you'd have oh, no idea. It's like he's in the room. He's in the room. He's yeah. He's like three stories tall and he has a huge sword and he kills you instantly <laughs> and makes yeah. your friends not like you. <laughs> it's not yeah, there's a couple of times where he went. He was below us in the um then with the swordkeeper there. Yeah, he was yeah, just down, down there. We're like, "What are you doing? Are you go uh, home, Crota. You're drunk." <laughs> yeah, surprise. Right. He is home. We're in his house. Yeah, that's why he's like, "It's so weird." Sometimes he is just drunk. He's in his house. It's yeah. okay. Uh, <laughs> huge thanks to Nicolian G Face, all of our producers for bringing those clips yes. to us. Uh, yes, the glitches are there, Bungie. We don't actually mind them as much as how we act, as long as it it only causes a short reset on the encounter. That was yes. King Paul's problem is sometimes right. it would reset 30 minutes of work if the raid yeah. glitched. Yeah. And these ones, yeah. you know, you're resetting 10 minutes of work. It's not that big a deal. Um, and it kind of makes it fun. Like you said, in those Crota yeah. encounters, you'd be like, this is nuts. Crota, you're drunk. Go home. Uh, yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that, I think as much as we do, we are kind of belly aching about Destiny 2. There are so many design choices that were right. They did right. it right on so many design choices that we can't we can't super complain, uh, you know. And it is all you know. It, we are we are a part of the Destiny community. Uh, we like to bellyache together. Uh, we like to play games together. Uh, so we're just we're waiting for uh, for the you know for that feedback to trickle in and uh, for Bungie to fix it all. So happy to wait. Yep. <clears throat> so exactly. Yeah, and uh, all the all the content producers. We have a few new ones. Uh, Mystic Rose has come on board to uh, to lend her uh, her her opinions and views to our uh, our hive mind that is the Grenades and Horseshoes <laughs> show. Um, yeah, so thanks to everybody that is involved in in that, and uh, we appreciate you very much. Thanks so much. <laughs> all right, what about Destiny Squared this week? Yep, I put a video in that we can show. So uh, before you play the video. Uh, I want to say that the uh, Destiny Community Artist Discord, or the DCA, um, is coming out with a YouTube channel. Um, and we are coming out with a podcast. Uh, me, uh, Lay Summerstone, and Matt Oishi are, are going to be the hosts of that show. And we've been discussing what does the DCA, it is a closed group, it's for a specific uh, you know, a number of artists in the community, um, what does it have to give to the community? It feels a little funny to talk to people about the DCA uh, when they're like, oh, I should join. And then you're like, well, um, I mean, do you do Destiny Art or, you know what I'm saying? It's just, it's a we- it's in a weird place. So um, <clears throat> what we've decided is this podcast <laughs> is kind of your conduit to the mind of a Destiny artist and the not just the work. So one thing I've learned uh, in the fine art experience is that people don't just want to look at art. Uh, They want to hear from the artist what the process was, why they were inspired to make that art, um, what went into getting them in their art, uh, you know, experience to the point where they wanted to make that art. They want to know all those things. 
Uh, it's very uncomfortable uh, sometimes <laughs> as an artist to answer those questions, um, especially if, you know, a lot of artists, they're doing art uh, as a, like a therapy and then they don't want to tell, right? They don't want to tell why they did that piece of art. It's a very personal thing. Uh, but what we're trying to do is be the conduit between the mind of a destiny artist um, and what inspired them to make what piece, interview those guys, uh, get that information out there um, in such a way that is a benefit to the community and a benefit to the artist. You know, they find the artist finds their voice, the community gets to hear that voice, everybody's happy. So uh, the, the DCA YouTube channel will be coming online soon. Uh, in the meantime, you can go to Twitter at DestinyComArt and you can, you know, see all the stuff that they retweet there and get a look at a lot of really great art. Um, so if you, if you want to check out the DCA YouTube though, they're doing a video and it's going to be a whole lot of like 30, 40 second clips of all of us that are in the DCA making a video explaining one of our pieces. So this is the one that I made, uh, for that video when that does come out. This is Mark Square. I am a proud member of the DCA. My favorite piece currently is the abduction of Mara Sov. And it's part of the Timeless Tower series that I did in collaboration with my friend Cortana 5. And we picked a bunch of old paintings and we put Destiny characters into them. And this one, uh, Marasov, is of course a kind of a figure of, of mystery at this point in time in the Destiny universe. Uh, but we layered it over the abduction of Europa, which is a painting that was finished in 1750 by John Baptiste Marie Pierre. If you like this content, and you'd like to see more, check us out on Twitter at MarkSquare underscore and at Cortana V. Yeah, so there it is. So it's, you know, if you if you imagine that in podcast form, uh, we'll be kind of featuring a lot of people's art in there uh, that are in the in the, the DCA. Um, and then, you know, that as far as that as a series of videos, I'm going to start doing that more on on Twitter. Um, a little bit of a longer explanation. I was limited, like I said, to 30 to 40 seconds that time. Uh, I did um, a, a video today about Ikora, the Ikora with the air mine. Yeah, um, no, no, <laughs> the airmine. Yeah, so same series, uh, but yeah, I'm gonna do uh, I'm gonna do ones on all of them though. Like, you know, what inspired it? Uh, you know, what I was thinking about the original painting, and what, or in, in in the case of the Timeless Tower, what Cortana and I were thinking about the original painting, and why we thought it would be a good fit for mm -hmm. a Destiny mashup. Um, <clears throat> but that's the type of thing that you could look forward to hearing from all the different community artists in the, in the DCA. Like, why did they make it? Uh, what inspired them? What was their path to get to that point? Uh, so we'll be featuring that soon on the, uh, the DCA podcast. And uh, keep an eye on the Twitter at DestinyComArt for news about when their YouTube channel will go live. So there'll be a lot of, a lot of really cool Destiny art stuff coming up. A lot of really yes. fascinating artists in the community. A lot of, a lot of talent out there. Yeah, and, and we'll take this chance too, Mark, because I know that you're not going to, to give a shameless plug to your, your website as well, uh, marksquare.net. Yes. Um, from time to time, he will feature some of his work on there that you can actually purchase various prints. Um, I don't know if you have thought about putting this this series on that, that site for purchase from, from prints, but man, there's some really fantastic work that, that you've put together, um, each one of them. And they keep getting better, like this Marisol right. one. Not it's T for so teen, good. right? Don't get this for your twelve year old. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, yeah, a little, um, tiny it's blue got nipple some anatomy there. there for you to <laughs> to <laughs> enjoy. Um, uh, you know, I would, no, but the uh, <laughs> more importantly, it's it's just it's it's just very clever. You know, that's what I love about your art, Mark. It's not only is it quality, the art is quality, but it's very clever. And for somebody who has a dry sense of humor like I do, um, I see that and I think, wow. I wouldn't put one of these classic paintings up on in, in my office, but mm -hmm. something with a destiny spin, this I could put up in my office because it's right. clever. It has some humor to it because you're applying something which doesn't really fit into mm -hmm. in such a quality way, right? That mm -hmm. if Thank it you. works, right? It feels like right. it does belong there. Right. Well, and, and this series, um, and, and in fact, most of my, my, you know, visual art going forward, it, 
the only way to get it is to really get involved in the destiny community and get involved in, in, in charities that are going on. Mm -hmm. Uh, so like right now, um, does Saris is doing, you know, St, you know, streams to benefit St. Jude. And, uh, he's got some prints over there. Um, and Cortana and I decided it's the same for this series. We're going to, we're going to try to find a streamer benefiting St. Jude. Uh, you know, we're, we're kind of pooling our, our resources as far as who she knows, who I know, uh, to run it through channels. And, and, uh, other than that, it's to come to a destiny community event, you know, and I'll have prints of different things on, on hand, uh, not for sale. Like you can just have them if you find me. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's just, uh, I've kind of, I've kind of decided that's the route that I'd like to go. Uh, with with my with my art uh, as yep. far as prints and things is just if uh, you know if if people are doing uh, charity streams or whatever I always try to donate to those um, if people are you know Des in particular he does a, a regular one um, let's see let me get the spelling of that for you guys so you guys can check out his Twitch channel um, it is let's see sorry pages turning. <laughs> Lots of pages. Do you remember? I always spell his name wrong. Desosaurus, I believe, is his, uh, yeah, his it's handle. D E Z S A R U S, I think, is the way that it goes. But I will mm -hmm. double check that here I on my Twitter. I will put it in our show notes, too. So if you check yeah. it out on iTunes yeah. or on our YouTube page, it'll be in the show notes. Yeah, D E Z S A R A S on uh, on on twitch so uh he's got some of these sepix respected perfected prints right now that he's mm -hmm. you know using in his in his stream so yeah that's the way to get a hold of my artists is to get involved in the destiny community come to events or to you know tune in on twitch to you know different streamers that are doing benefits for you know health or mental health so mm -hmm. that's that's it that's how you do it uh, on the marksquare.net, which uh, is a beautiful website that Grey Ghost designed, uh, so kudos, shout out to Grey Ghost there. Uh, you can find Derpa Sherpa stuff, <laughs> T-shirts with Derpa Sherpa on it, and different stuff like that. So we'll be doing different designs. Uh, we might actually move some uh, grenades and horseshoes merch through there as well. Mm -hmm. uh, if you guys are interested in getting some grenades and horseshoes shirts until we get our own website set up, that'll be where to find those as well. But yeah, so thanks for everything with. With uh, Destiny Squared this week. What about Yuna Lala? What about Yuna's musings? Oh, well, I have something a little bit different that I'd like to do today. And it's probably going to be, it's a little silly, so bear with me. Uh, but I figured since, you know, we're going to talk a lot about Destiny. and But we're also going to be talking about a lot of, sorry, I have a cat here on my mouth. <laughs> I mean, we're going to talk a lot about, <laughs> you know, new games going forward, too. I thought it was a perfect opportunity to pull out the silly and play one of our elementary school, middle school staples, MASH. Do either of you remember what that is? No. I remember no? playing MASH. Yep. What? So Explain it to me. So what it is, is so MASH stands for a mansion, apartment, shack, house. So what I do is I have several different categories. You pick your top three um, of what you would like to do with that. Um, I make dots on the page. You tell me when to stop. And then I count it down. And we, through process of elimination, figure out what your fantasy life is going to be. But this we want to do with... Um, I'm going to do okay. this with video game twist. So everything has to be video game related. It doesn't have to specifically be Destiny related, but any video game. Okay. All right. Okay. So let let Gray let someone that's not me go first, so then I can try to understand. Okay. Okay. So Gray. So the first one is so I kept it to eight because anything more is going to take us forever. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's fine. So first question is where would you live in a video game world? Like what video live? game world would be your domicile? Um, I would live uh, Black Mesa. Okay. What what's that from? Uh, Half Life. Oh, okay. ooh, man, you're <laughs> hardcore. <laughs> okay, what's your second choice? Uh, the second place I would live. Mm -hmm. Um, I would live uh, on Nessus. Okay. Okay, and last choice. My last choice. Um, I would live in Nintendo Golf. On the Nintendo. Course, circa 1982. Okay. 
Okay. And why would you pick these three? Um, so Half-Life was one of my uh, f- just first games that really captured my interest that said, I want to be a gamer. And so much of it was the environment of being in this research facility in the desert. Um, so it, there's just something about that environment that I spent so much time in my early teen years, uh, preteen years, really thinking about. So that was one, uh, mm-hmm. the Nessus, um, the environment just is so kind of alien, but but also beautiful. And then uh, the classic golf game. That was one of the very first video games I ever played. I think I was four or five years old, right? The, the original Nintendo Entertainment mm-hmm. System. Just crazy, boring green blobs and uh, <laughs> watching one white blob go. So in terms of what an environment in video gaming looks like, that was my very first experience was Nintendo Golf. Okay. Awesome. Okay, so who would be your video game best friend? Um, my vi- so it has to be a video game character. Yes. Um, Cade Six. Okay. It'd be an easy best friend. Yep. Who else? Uh, uh Claptrap. Uh, oh. Uh, Claptrap. A great choice. Yeah. And last choice. Oh, uh, I only get one more choice. Um. <laughs> Make it count. I know. Um, I'm going to say... uh, We'll go ahead and... It's kind of boring, so I hope it doesn't fall on it, but we'll say Gordon Freeman. What's Gordon Freeman? Or actually, no, no, I'm going to change it. Uh, And Mm -hmm. this is bad because I can't remember her name, but um, I'm going to say the the robot, the female uh, angry robot from Portal. Um, oh. Chad, yes. please correct oh, me yes. on the name um, of who oh, that is. Her name. Yeah, she has quite a thigh gap. The cake is a lie. The cake is a lie. Yeah, well, we'll just chosen. call her cake. <laughs> yeah, or even like the the British one in Portal Two. He'd be a good one too. But it's been so long oh, I since I played, that. I can't remember the name yeah. of these characters. But we'll go ahead and say that angry robot in in Portal. Okay, and okay. So, what would be your weapon of choice? My weapon of choice? A portal gun would be pretty awesome, so let's go ahead and put that, that one down. That would be. Oh, the fun you could have with a portal gun. Oh, my yeah. goodness. Yeah, that would okay. be skydiving. That'd be awesome. <laughs> uh, Doom BFG. We'll go ahead and throw that one down. What's that from? From Doom. Doom, Doom BFG. <laughs> oh, the Doom. <laughs> Derp. Yeah. Derp. Yeah. Can you tell yeah. I didn't play Doom? Yeah. I was Ooh. late to the first person shooters. So. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and then uh then the uh the bow and arrow from tomb raider man i love the just using a bow and arrow in uh in tomb raider was so awesome silent and just super deadly awesome shoot people in the throat okay <laughs> what about your video game vehicle uh vehicle you know you should <laughs> you should have said these ahead of time um <laughs> my favorite well, no, video game vehicle uh 67 stingray cobra from gran turismo Ooh, five jeez wow. panty dropper <laughs> your panties that's why your screen mark is only your chest up <laughs> hand check yeah. <laughs> yeah. okay uh we're gonna go ahead and say my um my spaceship from destiny destiny or destiny 2 just my cockpit i'm oh. sitting in right now yeah okay so just the oh, cockpit in, well what what i don't know the name of any of these um it's exotic just call it an exotic, exotic. Destiny spaceship i don't i don't remember the names <laughs> do you memorize the names of your spaceships i don't know yeah uh, really uh, yes yeah, she's that kind of nerd <laughs> killing it Making us look bad on the nerd scale. Yeah, even though I can't do anything with it. I should have picked an Elite Dangerous ship because I actually use those. And, oh. Well, you have one more. so. I know. I have one more. Uh, a vehicle. Um, uh, we're going to say uh, the a nice big rig from Truck Simulator 2. Oh. <laughs> it's amazing how people are like dedicated in the Truck Simulator world. Um, mm-hmm. I have actually not played the game, but I think it'd be funny if it comes <laughs> out that I have to drive a, a Mack truck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. 
Okay, so the next one is video game spouse. Video game spouse. Yes. Um, uh, Petra Venge. Mm. It's all that knife work she does. <laughs> right. Right. What else? Um, let's go ahead and go with Callus. <laughs> He's your sugar daddy. Not robot callus. <laughs> the real, real one. He's warm and fleshy. He's attracted to gum. You drops. get lost yeah. in the bowl. He's like he's like a two footed job of the hut. He just yes. likes armpit extra ones all over. <laughs> extra ones. <laughs> oh, Can I must powder smell your folds? Horrible. So, um, all that like cheese going on there. Oh. <laughs> yeah. All right, video okay. game spouse. Um, I'm going to have to think really hard. Um, geez. Uh, let's, go, let's go ahead and say Princess Peach. Peach. Oh, she get kidnapped all the time. You put insurance on that lady. Yeah, that <laughs> insurance on that lady. <laughs> okay, what about video game vacation spot? Ooh. You said eight was going to be a lot? Yeah. <laughs> Whatever we've done so far is a lot. <laughs> Video we'll game vacation lot. spot. I have two rows of four. This is standard <laughs> teenage girl shit. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know about this, Greg. <laughs> you should have seen the ones. Like We used to do like 20. <laughs> I think when we played MASH, down. it was like four. <laughs> Let's see attention span of a 10-year-old boy. Four. Yeah. <laughs> Four. I've, I've got... There's three left. That's it. All right. Okay, All right. Can we spot. nix this one? Because I'm not even sure I can think of three video game vacation spots. Okay, we can skip that. What about your video game mentor? Uh, video game mentor. Um, let's go with... Uh, uh, um... Gosh. So he's the the doctor from Half Life Two, Episode One and Two, and he actually, if you haven't played the game, sorry, but he dies. Um, and I can't remember his name, but he's kind of like the voice in your ear. So we'll put him as one, and maybe somebody in the chat can help us out. But um, yeah, so from Half Life Two, kind of the guy who's guiding you through through the whole thing. Um, Atlas from Bioshock. Mm-hmm. You guys remember remember Atlas? Very again, he's kind of guiding you through the game. Um, yeah. Ends up being an adversary, but still a very interesting character. Um, let's see, and a third mentor in a video game. Um, let's go ahead and say Zavala. Okay. Mm. So Zavala. <laughs> yeah, not okay. Asher, asshole. <laughs> and okay, last one is video game food. What's your favorite video game food? Um, cup of noodles from Final Fantasy Fifteen. <laughs> oh! mm-hmm. <laughs> Product, mm-hmm. <laughs> Product placement. Product <laughs> placement. Yeah. <laughs> um, we'll go ahead and say uh, toilet water from Fallout Four. <laughs> hey, you got to get some health quick. Go find that toilet water. I'm okay, going to say that makes you less healthy, but I don't know about this game. <laughs> um, the last one for food. Um, let's go with uh, uh, Magic Mushroom from uh, Super Mario Brothers. Good makes pick. it grow big. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Unless it's a mini mushroom. Okay. Yeah, it's... Okay, so now you know next. I'm going to make a bunch of stashes on the paper. You have to tell me when to stop. <laughs> Okay. Three, two, one. Stop. What? Okay. Some kind of wizardry is occurring here. Give me a second. I have to figure it out. Okay. Right. Well, uh, while you're just figuring that out, um, Mark Square, sir. Uh, so you uh you did pick up super mario brother odyssey but did you mm-hmm. did you play it at all did you install it you haven't installed it yet 
Oh, I installed it. Yes, okay. it is installed. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to give it a shot very shortly. So you uh, make happy. That was all new to you. No, never met. I understood the reference of Cappy because their product placement so good. And I've been in a store and saw Cappy like this Mario hat with eyes. Uh, so, yeah, I'm into it. I'm excited to play it. Yeah, I wish um, there was some way they could. Uh, even the local co-op is a li- is pretty limited for the most, you know, just for the large respect. But even if they could make that online, uh, even just that limited aspect could could make the game a little bit more enjoyable for people that are trying to play in a, a far distance from each other. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Online co-op would be necessity for that type of stuff. I I've been hoping that Zelda would come out with something like that. Even if it's just like two of you can kind of like gang up on some things It'd be so amazing. Uh, imagine the puzzles that they could make in a Zelda game, like with two player co-op it would be so good well and i think that they did that to a certain degree not it wasn't with zelda games but i i could see them doing it in like a final fantasy tactics type type way where it was Mm -hmm. turn-based and i you know i could see them kind of retooling it it'd be tough i think you know destiny kind of shows that hit detection is complicated from a networking perspective. So I could see right. where a lot of these, these other 3d games, like, like Mario brothers, like, uh, mm-hmm. like a Zelda, that's a whole level of complexity that they're probably not too willing to incorporate into their game unless there's a big return right. on investment. Yeah. They're, uh, but they're selling plenty without it. I was going to say you and I, we bought it, you know, and, yeah. and it wasn't dependent sure. on an online co-op component. Yeah. Yeah, Lawn Boy in chat's bringing out Zelda Four Swords was great. I do have that, never played it. Um, but that one does have online co op. That's like a top down Zelda. Right. Um, I should pull that back out of the closet there and try that one out. For How are you sure. doing, Yuna? You getting close? I'm done. Am I in a Mack truck with Zavala? <laughs> I hope so. Okay, all I done. Hope so. Okay, so you, Gray, this is your video game life. You live in a mansion which is very gray, on Nessus. Yeah. Mm, Your work. best friend is the Cake is a Lie robot from Portal. <laughs> Your weapon of choice, coincidentally, is also a Portal gun. Oh, yeah. Your I'll need vehicle it. is your exotic Destiny ship. Okay. Your favorite food is the mushroom from Mario. <laughs> your mentor in Zavala. And your spouse that you get to love and cherish for life is... The real callus. Oh, the nice! Real oh. Powders folds till the end of my days. Those are our <laughs> vows. What? <laughs> oh, powders is folds till the end of my days. You could get lost in there forever. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe. I'm not even going. I do want to do this game, but I don't want to do it today because there's no way we're topping. I'll powder <laughs> his folds until the end of my day. <laughs> it's, it's a very poignant note to end our show on, and we are about an hour and 40 minutes into oh, our show. Oh, so. that's true. It has been very hefty. Oh, what a show. <laughs> 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 oh my gosh like when when it, heaven forbid and gray dies on his tombstone it will say he powdered his folds <laughs> till the, the day he died <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh <laughs> so, uh, there's some things that get said in real life and i just have to write them down like uh, i'm just i'm writing this down um uh, just for just so I'd yeah, never forget. Open in clan chat, by the way. <laughs> yes. Well, we certainly hope that you enjoyed episode fifteen of Grenades and Horseshoes. Um, you know, each week, uh, Unilala, Mark Square, and Gray Ghost, myself, we love to bring silly shenanigans. And uh, if you have thoughts and ideas for the show, certainly reach out to us at gnhfeedback at gmail.com. And Jelly, take us out. Thanks, Thanks everyone, everyone for tuning in. in.
If you, if can't, you can't catch, catch the, live the live show, show then you can, can find the replays on the Grenades and Horseshoes YouTube, YouTube channel. channel. If you'd, if you'd like, like to stay connected, connected to the community during the week, you can, can reach us at our show Twitter, Twitter handle, handle at GNH Show, at show or, or at our individual handles at MarkSquare underscore, at GreatGhostToE, and at Unilala. We're also open to any ideas you may have, or seeing any clips that you'd like to send in. Please send them feedback to gnhfeedback at gmail.com. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next next week. week. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my goodness.